Hello. Oh, hello. Nice, um... <laughs> nice T-Rex. Oh, look, there's loads of them. Oh. Hey there. Hi. Well, welcome to you. You look tired from the road. Why don't you relax a spell? Let this fine town take care of you. Um, we haven't met yet. Oh, what am I doing? I got to thinking about making a good impression and plain forgot to tell you my name. I'm Jeannie May. I take care of folks here at the motel, long as they aren't troublemakers. Uh, well, I can certainly find trouble by accident, but I don't plan to make any. Um, I'm... Can you tell me about the place? We're in a little desert oasis, name of Novak. This is the Dino Delight Motel, and it's mine. Sounds wonderful. Um, I am looking for someone. Uh, a man in a checkered suit and a group of thugs that are following him. I don't suppose you've seen anybody like that? Well, he might have been wearing a fancy outfit, but he wasn't any kind of gentleman to me. Had his nose stuck so high in the air you couldn't see it above the clouds. City folk. They always think they deserve better than what they got. Those hoodlums he was with seemed to know Manny for some reason. He's our daytime sniper up in the dinosaur's mouth. Manny. Huh. Oh. Okay. Uh, where can I get some supplies? Go see Cliff Briscoe at the Dino Bite gift shop and tell him I sent you. I think he gets lonely standing around in that dino belly all day. He'll be glad for the company. Yeah, okay, I think I'll do that. Um, so what's uh, what's happening in this neck of the woods? Well, let's see. Dusty McBride's been losing some Brahmin, but that's probably the heat more than anything. Honestly, it's been real quiet. Ranger Andy's still hurt, but we got these two gentlemen snipers watching the road day and night keeping the trash out of Novak. They've been a blessing. Ah, very good. Um, yeah, what's, um, what's interesting to do and see around here? Well, there's Dinky, the town mascot. He's a sight. You probably already saw him when you came in, but you can go up inside, too. Up the roadways to the west, there's Repcon. That's the old rocket factory. There's been some sinister characters out there lately, so you may want to stay clear. Other than that, nothing to do but take it easy and enjoy good company. Old rocket company, eh? Uh, anything else to know? Well, up north a ways, you'll see a big tower. That's Helios 1. Used to be a power plant in its day. And there's a town just east of here called Nelson. Used to be such a quaint little place until those slavers took it over. But we got our wonderful snipers keeping an eye in that direction, and so far, the slavers have left us alone. Yeah, I think a uh, sniper would see off most... Uh, most dangers, unless you get attacked by a horde of death claws. Uh, tell me about this Repcon facility, please. I just know what I've heard. There's supposed to be some ghouls that went in a while back. Ever so often, there'll be a commotion from that direction. Explosions and such. Watch out for strangers! Huh. That might be worth checking out, that ED. An old rocket place. Hey, maybe we'll find an upgrade for you. A place with technology like that, surely we can find something with you and for you in there. And, you know as always the fact that I love tinkering with technology um, thank you genie um, let's go see about this gift shop might be able to pick up some ammo or something I'm gonna guess it's through here <laughs> check it out can we climb it oh why wow, we can I think that's about, that's about as far as I can get, though. Yeah, don't come up here, Edie. I know you can float, but I'm just being stupid more than anything. Massive, innit?
Hi there. How you doing? Welcome to the Dino Bite gift shop. My name's Cliff. If you're here for the T-Rex figurines, you're just in time. There's still a few left. Looks like you got more than a few. Uh, Jeannie sent me. Bless her. Seems like every traveler I get in here tells me the same thing. They see the sign and think, gift shop? That's just too good to be true. But Jeannie May always points them back in my direction. Well, a friend of Jeannie's is a friend of mine. And my friends get a discount at my store. What exactly do you sell? Well, there's T-Rex figurines, of course. That's our bread and butter. We also have an assortment of the Repcon factory souvenirs, rockets, things of that nature. Ah, cool. Um, what about supplies? I know that you're more interested in selling your souvenirs, but... Uh, you know, supplies are necessary in this wasteland. Guns? I, uh, well, yeah, I guess I might have a few. Darn it, no one ever buys the T-Rexes. I don't mean to be rude, but they're of very little use. Yes, they're cute, and had the world not reached such a fate, I would probably buy one and be on my way. But it's uh, hell out there, and in hell you don't defend yourself with cuddly T-Rex toys. Uh, anyway, show me what you've got. Sure thing. Have a look. Let's look in... Uh, yes. This. No, not this. Uh, do we want this? Stim pack? How many stim packs do I have? I'll take a stim pack. Uh, Jones needs NCR dollars. They're not really much use to me. And, uh... Well, I just want to bargain with you more than anything. Dinky the T-Rex souvenir. You have a thousand of them. My goodness. I mean, I hate to say I sold... I eh, hate to say I told you so. Mostly because I can't say it very well. But, um... Well, you know. Told you so. Nobody sells ammo from a Desert Eagle. Uh, I will take some 9mm rounds. All of those, in fact. Do you have... 10 millimeter round? Yes, you do. I will take those as well. I will sell you these, and that will do. Um, go on, for uh, just, just a humor you, tell me about these souvenir rockets. They're scale replicas of the real thing. Very detailed. Got a liquid in them that makes them glow. From what I hear, Repcon used to give them out on tours of their HQ up in Henderson. But I guess they had to stop after the first few kids thought they were filled with Nuka-Cola and drank it down. The papers had a name for the condition and everything. They called it the Repcon Shakes. Those were bad times for Robco. That can't be as bad as times are now. <laughs> um, how did you get them here? Well, they unloaded what they had left on the Dino Bite as a tax write-off, but that was before my time. Plenty of demand for them, seeing as how they're one of a kind collector's items, but I might still have some in back. Uh, not just now. Um, that'll do for things. Come back soon now. I will do. Now, uh, I was told I could get up to the mouth of the dinosaur. Do I just head up the stairs here? Yes? Yes. Oh, hi, Edie. I didn't know you'd followed me in here. Whoa! Excuse me, sir. What's going on, man? Uh, you must be Manny. Um, I'm looking for a man in a checkered coat. Wait, just let me check I've got the right person here. You are Manny, is that correct? I'm Manny. I'm on security detail here. You see a rifle barrel sticking out of the dinosaur's mouth, you got a 50-50 shot at me. Otherwise, it's Boone. Who's Boone? Boone's a sniper, same as me. Used to spot for him when we were enlisted with the NCR. After we got out, I talked him into settling down here. So, here we are. I'd introduce you, but, uh, we're not so friendly right now. Oh? And why is that? Me and his wife, we didn't see eye to eye on some things. We had some pretty big arguments. One day, she turns up missing, and he hasn't said a word to me since. What did you argue about? Man, you name it. See, I grew up in North Vegas. Me and my cousins. We were some bad seeds. Got in with a gang. I loved it. Then something happened, and I couldn't handle it anymore. 
So, I enlisted, earned my future, brought down my best friend to share that future with me. And here was this woman, who was too good for it, trying to take him away. So yeah, I didn't see eye to eye with the bitch. So you were in a gang? <laughs> a gang of tough guys, yeah? Were they tough? I was in the cons, man. It doesn't get any badder. You're in the cans. That explains something. Hey, a man with a checkered coat traveling with some cans. What do you know about that? Sure, I know him. What do you want with him? Uh, he shot me in the face, but I can't say that to you. Uh, I have a score to settle with the fella. Doesn't surprise me. Guy seemed like he'd do whatever it takes to get what he wants. Probably makes a lot of enemies. Well, listen, I can definitely help you find him, but I've got problems of my own. Maybe we can do a trade. You need my help. There's something I need, too. What is it you need? Novak, it's home for me now. I want that to be for good. I like it here, and I've left too many homes behind. But the only resource we got here is junk. Without that, people wouldn't have anything to trade. They'd all have to leave. We get most of it up the road from the old rocket test site, but a bunch of ghouls showed up one day and took it over. We can't get in there now. Um, you and Boone are experienced snipers, right? Surely you can just go and deal with it? I would, but I've got to watch the road. Caesar's Legion has been taking territory just east of here. They took Nelson. If we let our guard down, they might attack. All it takes for the Legion is for them to sense weakness. Okay, so um, what needs to be done? Well, they gotta go, or this will be a ghost town before long. It doesn't matter Legion? to me what you do. Or as the long ghouls. as the ghouls are out of there, ah, right. that's good enough for me. Um, well, I could do with this information. And I'm not exactly in a hurry to be anywhere else. Especially if you can help me find them. Like you said, you can. So, sure. Um, I'll take a look at least. It'd mean a lot to me. Yeah, well, I hope it means something monetary to you as well as information what have you uh, what have you been protecting the town from then what's the worst thing you've seen from this dinosaur's mouth you name it anything that comes within a thousand yards that looks like trouble lately we've been getting ghouls coming from the road to repcon out to the west quite a few last couple days the big threat is the legion coming from the east if they decide to attack with a full force they'll run us over but so far we've been lucky huh Tell me about your tour with the NCR, actually. I'm fairly interested there. Oh, it was great. I wouldn't trade it. Something about that lifestyle, the discipline, seeing new places, making people safe. What's not to like? So why'd you leave? Uh, well, I just felt like it was time, you know? Wanted to have a home. Plus, I was up at Camp Golf when Bitter Springs went down. I faked like I was sick to get out of going because I knew some of the people there. But when everybody came back, nobody would tell me what happened, and people would call us murderers sometimes when we showed up to secure towns. Yeah, that sort of comes with the territory when you're part of a military organization. You're not always going to be everyone's favorite organization, unfortunately. Um, so what exactly happened at Bitter Springs? I still don't know exactly. Just that a lot of people died who didn't want to be a part of the fighting at all. I don't blame anybody for it. There's so much chaos when you're fighting. You're lucky not to shoot your own guys. But it did take something out of it for me. It just wasn't the same. So when it came time to re-enlist, I just took my papers and walked. That's fair. You seem like a decent fella, Manny. Yeah, see ya. It's a shame you're not on good terms with your best friend. Uh, Edie, please, get off my head. Um... <sighs> Repcon to the north. No, that's not north. What's to the north? Helios 1, yeah, that's right. Um, what else did you point me in the direction of? Repcon headquarters. Repcon test site, okay. Um... Okay, uh, I'm just going to wander around town, maybe talk to a few of the locals. Uh, oh, is that the site over there? Oh, is that it over there? I don't know. 
I don't know. It's not important. Not right now. Yeah, anyway, um, thank you for the information. Um, I'll be back for more, though, as soon as I've seen about this ghoul problem. Ran out of mouse space there for some reason. A silent door, Edie. A silent door. They're rare. Drink it in. I'm not sure if in the middle of, of here is the perfect place for you to sit, but, you know. Uh, Ranger Andy. Cliff. Hop in on Ranger Andy. Hope he doesn't mind. Hello? Ah, hi there. We haven't met yet. You must be new in town. I'm Andy. Pleased to meet you. Name's Rick. Uh, what do you do right here right now? Right now? A whole lot of sitting on my keister and counting cracks in the ceiling. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. On better days, I help keep the peace. Boone and Vargas watch the road. I watch the town. Tell myself I'm doing some good. Doesn't seem like a bad thing. Uh, what happened to your leg? Yeah, twice. Actually, the first time, it was more like half my body. Knocked me out of the rangers. This time... It's mostly just reminded me how useless I've gotten. So what happened to it? A few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. What did you do? I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet and that's when I see the grenade he's left by my feet. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I fell down those stairs in front of the motel. Just in case I got to thinking I'd put it all behind me. That second time was uh, quite the story, I gotta say. Uh, just because you're idle and you'll never walk again. I forget where I was going with that. Probably not uh, Not the most silver tongued, am I? Um, you were the NCR, is that right? Was. Was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. <laughs> they haven't been responding to me last couple of days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. Um, would you feel better if I went and checked on them? Uh, no, no. They're gonna think I'm having trouble letting go. They're good soldiers. I don't give them enough credit. Okay, fair enough. Um. That'll be all, I think. Thank you. Hey, uh, wait a sec. I know what I said, but if you find yourself by Ranger Station Charlie, let me know what you find. I'd be interested. Uh, I've just been there. I don't suppose you want to hear what I found while I was there. Ah! Sorry. I hope you don't mind. I know this is your home. Any word on Station Charlie? Well, I... I um... Oh, apparently I can't tell you. Never mind. Look out for yourself. Yeah, you just, um... You be careful. Don't be falling down the stairs again. Oh God, get out. You could probably still kill me in a single punch or something. I don't know. Who lives here? Motel room. That's Manny's room. I wonder if we can talk to this Boone fella. Maybe see what happened to his... Uh, uh, to his wife. Pretty tragic story, to be honest. Oh, that's oh, that'd be trespassing to go to Boone's room. Boone doesn't want to be disturbed, Edie. That should keep the powder gainers away. Yeah, well, hopefully, because I spent a lot of time trying to get them a new sheriff. Uh, let's. Uh, is Victor still hanging about? I notice. Maybe you can figure out what his deal is. You know, being a robot as well. What's going on over here? Between you and me, I don't think she studied at an accredited institution. Who's this? What can I do for you? 
Hi. Oh, you're a doctor. Uh, I don't really need anything from you at the minute. I might be addicted to something, but later. I'm not too bothered about my addiction, so. She hasn't paid me anything yet. Should I be worried? I'd be more worried about the fact she's covered in blood. I mean, is that from her victims? Is she performing surgery that's not going well? I don't know. Uh, that's. Oh, there does not seem to be many people about town. You there, sir. Sir, excuse me, sir. Good sir. What, Careful. What? They got spies all over. You've got spies all over. Who sent you? I ain't talking. They tried to get me to talk before, but I didn't say nothing. And I don't aim to now, by gum. I, I've just... What? Talk about what? what? I <laughs> Talk about what? Confounded, no bark. You've done it again. You let on that you know things. Now they'll never let you be. All right, stranger, you got me. What do you want to know? What, seriously? So you you, you weren't going to tell anybody anything and I say one thing and you're ready to tell me? <sighs> anyway, um, why did they call you no bark? Because they know I ain't just barking here. What I say is God bite. Because it's the truth. Them quack doctors can say what they want about all the rad scorpion stings that done pierce my skull. And I know what I seen. And what did you see? I'm suddenly interested. But apparently I can't ask you. Uh, so, what's been going on in town then? There's been things of a disturbing nature going on at the McBride Corral. Seems every night one of their herd meets a most unnatural death. And always there's holes all over the body. Work of the chupacabra, the livestock vampire, says no bark. But they don't pay no mind. Too many holes, they say, and there's bullets in them. Well, says no bark, we got a chupacabra with an automatic weapon. And that's when they get real quiet, because now they see the predicament we're in. It stands to reason that an automatic weapon's done it. I'm not sure what Bigfoot has to do with it. Although, with the amount of mad mutants around here, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, what else do you know about the deaths, then? I come face to face with the Chupacabra himself one night, whilst I was <laughs> investigating whether this gecko was hiding his treasure from me. He was the meanest, ugliest Chupacabra you could imagine. Had two heads and fangs down to the ground. Best I could tell, anyways, since when he come up to me, he was invisible. Had himself a blunderbuss, what would rotate and shoot bullets real fast out of a backpack. Never seen nothing like it. Walked right past me having an argument with somebody. But I only saw one chupacabra, so I guess the other fella had to be invisible too. Only more invisible than the other one. You know, call me crazy, but I don't think you're actually crazy. A blunderbuss that would twirl and shoot bullets from a backpack sounds like a minigun. Um, two heads and fangs I really can't account for. Um, but there are such devices that can turn you invisible. I know this, I've worked on a few and repaired them before. Stealth boys they're called. Kind of like this pit boy I'm carrying here, except you mount it on you somewhere and it messes with the light and around you and makes you, makes you look... I don't know, kind of see-through. Um, so whilst you may be a drunken old fool with a head injury, you may not be entirely hallucinating. Uh, so other than that, what else is interesting around here? Folks will tell you that they've seen ghouls up near the rocket factory. Sensationalist hooey, cooked up by superstitious yokels, seeing phantoms of their own imagining. Well, you're one to talk, but uh, what do you think's actually at the factory, since ghouls are not exactly in short supply around here? Ghosts. Kami ghosts, who don't know they're dead. Hoping to steal our rockets, so they can fly up and paint the moon pink and draw a Lenin face on it. I've seen one of them disappear and reappear before my very eyes. Although, being a scientist, I have to admit I might have just blinked for longer than usual... What with the shock of seeing a commie ghost and so forth. Okay, maybe everything you're saying is complete twaddle. Uh, thank you, Nobak Noonan. You've given me things to think about, uh, if uh, nothing else. If anyone asks, 
We never spoke. Yeah, believe me, I'll be denying talking to you to everybody I meet. Uh, what do you think of that, Edie? Somebody with a stealth boy killing Brahmin? It's not totally out of the question, is it? Is it something that we deal with? I don't know. How valuable are the Brahmin to us? I don't really want to go barging into too many people's homes. Take that though, might be useful one day. Knowing how to sneak around a corner. Can't argue with that. No back shack. You know what? Oh, is he coming? No, I don't want to go into his house while he's watching me. It wouldn't hurt to peek around in this place actually and see what we can learn. What's that over there? Hmm. Let's go see. Nothing much else for us to do, is there? Oh, yes, I know we need to go to the Repcon facility for information on the man who shot me, blah, blah, blah. You weren't even there. Why do you care? Stop telling me what to do. I'm exploring. I'm curious. And I, I don't know whether they're a little bit mad, actually, as well. Oh, dogs. Ah, they don't seem to be... Oh. There's a firefight going on somewhere, Edie. Doesn't seem to be anything to do with us, though. What well-trained pooches. Hello there. Hi there. I'm Old Lady Gibson, or so they tell me. I've got odds and ends for sale, and I'm pretty good at fixing things, too. You might have noticed the very large building just north of here. That's Helios 1. The NCR runs the place, so it's off limits to prospectors. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry, old lady Gibson. I, I, I'm feeling a little bit tired now. Um, the Helios one isn't really a concern of me right now. Uh, can you tell me anything about the Repcon facility, please? Sometimes it seems like I spent the better portion of my youth in that old wreck of a building. Me and my hubby, may the man rest in peace, used to scavenge there. <laughs> if it weren't bolted down, you can bet we took it and sold it. A lot of the scrap you see around here is from Repcon. Even my favorite chair. Fair enough. I can't think there'd be that much left in there then if you've been scavenging in there for that long. Um, what do you sell? Happy to do it. A lot of rubbish, by the looks of things, for high prices. Uh, that'll do. Take care now. Yeah, you too. Subject E, diagnosis complete. Begin recording. My name is Whitley. I'm a researcher at Adams Air Force Base. Until recently, I was in charge of the Duraframe reinforcement project for the combat model iBots. Go on. iBot Duraframe Subject E is both the prototype and the last functional model in this test group. I was prepared to make several significant upgrades to the machines. However, as the project was cancelled and all Duraframe assets are being diverted to Hellfire Armor, I am sending this model to the Navarro outpost. Continue. If you're listening to this log from one of our Enclave outposts in Chicago, give this unit whatever repairs it needs so it can continue to Navarro. So you're trying to get to Navarro. Wherever Navarro is. It's okay, Pucci. Colmio. Bazura. Ray. I think I like Ray the best. It's one I uh, know how to pronounce. Um, so you are... Property of the Enclave. The Enclave. What's the Enclave? That feels familiar. But, um... We'll learn more about that at some point, I guess. Uh, this is your scrapyard. Don't really fancy poking around in that. Uh, I don't understand the idea behind decoratively standing those cars up. For, uh, Roger's repairs. I guess somebody called Roger runs that. Now, which way was the Repcon place? Test site that way. What time is it? Yeah, I suppose we could go and take a look, right? 